Hi friends, this is Olga Speaks directly from Vancouver, Canada and in today's video I want to talk about your CELPIP test date and what to expect on the test date. So taking a test, any kind of test, be it CELPIP, be it TOEFL, be it um, IELTS, can be super stressful on the test date, especially when you're so anxious and so overwhelmed with everything. But it doesn't have to be that way if you know where you're going, what you're doing and what to expect on the day. So um, if you're interested in um, what to do on your test date and like what will be the best way, just keep watching this video, um, subscribe to my channel and give me a like so that I know that you like this kind of content and I will make more videos like this. So let's go over the things to expect on the test date. So first things first, you need to make sure that you arrive to the test location on time. So you'll be asked to arrive 45 minutes before your test starts. And this is your check-in time. So you have to be there even earlier than it's stated because the check-in procedure will also take some time. If you fail to arrive on time, they will cancel your test and you will not be eligible for a refund. So here, the most important thing is to make sure you have enough time to get there, make sure you know the street, make sure you know where you're going, um, and make sure you are there even earlier than, than stated. So for me, I took the test right here in the neighborhood about 15 minutes walk from home. So I made sure that I um, left home on time and I was there 45 minutes before everything started. So just be aware that the check-in for the test will close 15 minutes before the start time and if you're not there then your test will be automatically cancelled and you will not be eligible for a refund. Um, one of the most important things, thing num number two I would say, is bringing your national identification. So it has to be a valid original identification that you have. So basically I registered with my passport and I brought my passport to, uh, to the test venue and they checked it and they said I was good to go. I had a friend here in Canada who didn't bring his passport but he had his driver's license on and the test examiners didn't let him take the test because if you registered with your passport you should be bringing your passport with you. So make sure you have that because if you don't, you won't be able to receive a refund or reschedule right there, right? This makes you um, be being like more disciplined, right? And having more responsibility right there. So one of the other things that you need to think of is either show them a printed copy or a digital copy of your confirmation letter so that they also can check that this is you and you've arrived on time and you're registered for this test. So I took the test during the COVID times, right? So I was also undergoing some of the COVID test procedures there. When I came in, they asked me if I had any COVID symptoms. They asked me about um, questions about how I felt and um, if I had a fever and they took my temperature. So this was all right. Uh, we are all living during the times of pandemic. So this was something new. And just like undergoing those questions, make sure that you answer them correctly. And if you're not feeling well, make sure that you stay at home. So a few tips from me, um, make sure to use the washrooms, the bathrooms, the restrooms before you start the test, uh, before you start the check-in. Right, because um, once you're there, once you're in the room, the test time has started. Um, the examiners are not going to put it on hold and there will be no time for you to do that. Right, so I would suggest go before, go in advance um, and make sure there's nothing holding you back from, from taking the test. So once you come in, um, you will be asked to put your belongings in a special locker room. So by belongings, I mean your, mean your electronics, your watch. Um, if you have bulky jewelry, they, they will also ask you to leave it behind. And then your uh, coats, scarves, hats, um, hoods, anything like that. Um, so just take it off and then leave it in the locker. It's going to be super safe with them. After you are done with the test, the staff member will walk you to your locker and you'll be able to collect your belongings. Um, turn off your cell phone before you leave it. You don't want to have like any 
um, music, any alarms going off because that's gonna be a little weird. So just make sure you turn it off or turn you turn off the voice uh, notifications on your iPhone on your phone, and um, go for the test. So the check-in um, time is. We'll, we'll take we'll take you some time so first they check your identity and then a staff member will walk with you to do the actual check-in so they um, look at your passport they look at you see if this is the same person they take it very seriously and very strictly here in Canada um, the process is um, very straightforward so you will also be asked to um, to sign the document so basically signing the form that you're here and you're taking the test and they will make a copy of your personal identification that you brought with you. So in my case, my passport, they took a copy and they took a picture of me. So this picture will appear on the results of your test and um, it's there for their personal records. So once you are done with your check-in, a staff member will walk with you to your seat. So you'll have your assigned computer and your seat and you will have the task to test your microphone and speakers and to make sure that everything is working properly and functioning in the right way. If you have any problems with uh, any issues with the technology, just raise your hand and let them know so that they can fix the issue before you start the test. Once you're done with all of those check-ins, um, the staff member will announce um, the code and you will have to enter that code in your test and that will be the start of your test, the official start of the test. Once you do that, the timer will go off and start um, counting the time, and then you'll be ready to, to start the test. If you have any kind of questions regarding the test itself, the program, the computer, the headphones, um, or you need uh, a piece, an additional piece of paper for taking notes, just raise your hand and ask a staff member to assist you with that. Remember that a staff member is not going to help you answer the questions that are directly in your test, but they can help with any other technical issues or any other issues you might be facing. So during the test, you cannot leave your computer. You cannot just um, stand up and leave without a permission. You have to be only uh, focused on looking in your computer. Um, you're not supposed to look at other people's computers or what they are writing. So basically not supposed to cheat on the test and you're not supposed to talk to other test takers, right? So just keep it to yourself, keep quiet. And then um, when your speaking part um, proceeds, you will have to speak in a very soft manner in order not to distract the other test takers. So just uh, be respectful that other people are around you and try to speak in a very mild voice. So if you do wanna go to the washroom um, right in the middle of your test, um, the examiner will not stop the timer for you, but you can make that decision and you can go to the washroom. Um, a staff member will walk you to the washroom, will wait for you, and then will walk you back to, to the test station. After you're done with the test, the staff member will walk you back to the storage, to the locker room so that you can collect your belongings, collect everything that you had, and then you are um, good to go. You're free to leave. Um, if you've experienced any kind of issues or anything that you think might have affected your test score, might have affected your results, make sure to report it right there on site and make sure that you raise your concerns to the staff member and um, they will guide you on your next steps there. Just make sure you report it before they release the scores. Um, they are super fast and super diligent with delivering the scores. I got my scores two days after passing the test. I got a text message and then an email and I was able to download my results in a PDF file. So that was pretty awesome. I didn't have to wait any extra time, but they might be experiencing delays with uh, COVID and everything. Um, let me know if you have any questions after this video. I'm super happy to make more content on CellPip and we'll also post some of the um, training tests. Here I'm including some more videos about CellPip that I already made. Um, check them out. Let me know if you have any questions and have a happy Friday. Thank you so much. Bye.